Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. Today we are in the Central West End neighborhood of St. Louis, Missouri, exploring an American four-square house that was built in 1899. Now this house boasts a ton of historic and period details that we're about to see. First, let's take a look around outside and then we'll go explore it. We've just walked inside this house and immediately there are some details to point out. Come take a look at this. The hardware on this door is historic and original to the home and the current homeowner actually cleaned all of this up to re-expose it. So this is just really brilliant how we can see the fleur-de-lis motif as well as some other floral motifs along the top here. And as we start to make our way into this house, there is of course a very large mirror here and over on this side is a grand staircase. So let's really take a look at this. The newel post has been decorated with heavy ornamentation and the banister soars up in a U shape to the top floor. Down here, there is a bench and this actually opens up for storage. So that's just a really cool piece of functionality that's left in this home. Now, as we look down at the flooring, of course, this is all brand new. When the owner acquired this house, a lot of its historic charm had been covered up and reconfigured by previous owners. So her goal was to bring that back in. There was some quarter sawn oak left here in the floor that was original to the house, but there wasn't enough to salvage for the first floor. So she took that up and reinstalled it on the second and third floors, which we'll see in just a little while. Now, some of the things that she was able to save were the millwork and come on into the dining room because this house just keeps getting more grand. We can look up at the ceiling and we can see all of the plaster work in its original condition. And of course, this is original to the house and it is just, breathtaking how beautiful it is. As we pass by the windows over here, notice the original leaded glass windows on the sides. And then in the center are newer windows, but something really interesting has happened here. She was able to save the old hardware and reinstall it down here on the new windows to kind of bring some of that historic charm back into the home. Making our way further through the dining room, we come to the original fireplace. Now this has fluted columns with ionic tops on them. And then it also has a curving mantelpiece with newer tile. And of course this is no longer functional, but it's wonderful that it's been kept in this house and has been restored to this form. Now, as we start to pass out of the dining room, we will come to the living room. But first, there's this beautiful pocket door here with all of these glass panels. And this is all original to the house. We can even see the original hardware with a hole for a skeleton key right here. So let's take a closer look at this. And of course, this has all been cleaned up so that it has its original luster about it. All right, let's go check out the living room now. Come on in here. One of the first things that really catches our eye are the wood panels that are on the walls. So some of this is actually original to the house and the rest was restored by the current owner of the home to match with the historic charm of these panels. So good luck finding the ones that are newer and the ones that are older because it just blends so seamlessly together. Now, as we pass by this way, we come to the fireplace. Now the original detail worth pointing out here is the cast iron inset. And I don't believe that we've seen one with a hood over it before. So this is very fascinating. Of course, this is one of those period details that's been preserved in the home. 
Moving along, we now come through a flat archway into the kitchen where I'm actually standing now it used to be a butler's pantry. And that probably was not original to the house. As I mentioned earlier, previous owners had kind of reconfigured this house and gotten rid of a lot of the historic charm. But the current owner did some things to open this kitchen back up and still modernize it while paying homage to the historic charm. So if we take a look at this bench down here, this was actually crafted from old doors that were not salvageable in this house. So they were given a second chance at life inside of this house in a different way. So that's just a really creative thing to do. And the millwork that we see above the window and the doors were recreated to match the millwork that we've been seeing throughout the rest of the house. So of course this kitchen is newer. It has shaker cabinets. It has these quartz countertops, modern high-end appliances, and it all goes in the same colors that we've been seeing for the rest of the woodwork in the house. So even though it's modern, it really ties together with this old world aesthetic that we've been seeing so far. Now off of the kitchen is the maid staircase, which is now right behind me with the painted blue treads. And off to this side is a powder room. So let's just peek our heads in here. And of course, this is all very modern. However, the decision was made to bring in a pedestal sink and a simple toilet to wallpaper the room and just to keep it simple and elegant, still tying into the historic charm. And of course, we can see on this pocket door that the original hardware has been cleaned up and returned to its original luster. Now that we've seen the entire first floor, let's take the grand staircase and go check out the rest of this house. Come on up. As we make our way up these steps, we can see the quarter sawn oak that I was talking about on the first floor that was brought back up here and used to patch up some of the spaces that weren't looking so hot. So this space really starts to open up as we arrive at this landing. First, we'll go into this bedroom. And this room is set up more as a home office. And we'll take a look around this in just a minute. So one of the things that I really want to point out are the windows that are in here. So this still has two of the historic original windows with leaded glass. Come take a closer look at this. We can see the unique form of them. And then they even have these little handles that you could twist and pull out to open this window. Now coming out of this room, we're going to pivot and come into this room. And we can see, first of all, that this door is just gorgeous. And of course, this is original to the home and there's a matching closet door that I'll show you in just a moment. Let's take a look at the historic hardware. Once again, it's been completely cleaned so that it really shows off its original luster. Come on in here and we can really see the quarter sawn oak in all of its glory as the natural light hits it. We can also see the historic fireplace mantle. Of course, this is no longer functioning, but it's just really amazing that it's still in this space. Cutting across to the other corner of this bedroom, there is a large closet and this is the same wood type as what we just saw on the door whenever we entered the room. However, now the board pattern has changed. There's a crystal doorknob on here with newer hardware and a skeleton key. Once again, paying homage to the house's history. So let's go ahead and open this up and we can take a look at just how large the space is. This is a really large closet given the time period of this house. The next bedroom that we'll come to is now the owner suite and it is directly through here. So come on in and let's start taking a look around.
Once again, we have another one of these beautiful doors with the same wood type that we just saw in the former bedroom and the same matching historic hardware. So as we start to pass through this space, there are some things that have been done to kind of revitalize the historic charm. The fireplace was stripped to expose the brick and this is actually a really good chance for us to see the construction method of these fireplaces as we have the segmental arch going in two different forms here. We have bricks that are going horizontally and bricks that are going vertically supporting each other under the weight of this wall. So that's just a really neat thing that gives us some clues as to how this house was constructed and what might be behind these walls in here. And on the far side of the room are newer French doors that were installed here. And these go out onto a terrace that overlooks the backyard. And we're not going to go out there today because it's pretty cold outside, but we will head into the owner's bathroom. So come on through here. And this used to be an office in the home. So what you're seeing behind me is historic to when the home was built. And it's just really amazing that this piece has been left here in this wall as a built-in and incorporated into the modern day bathroom. So let's go ahead and take a peek in here. Over on the far side of the bathroom is a more modern take on a claw foot tub, as we can see the chrome finishes at the base. And of course there's newer tile and this bathroom is just drop dead gorgeous. We won't linger too long in here because there's not too much historic to talk about, but let's just continue looking around for a moment. Now that we've seen the entire owner suite, let's make our way back out to the stair hall and through the landing. So come on through here. There's a laundry room off to this side, once again with French doors. And as we pass through here, we have the maid stair off to the side and we'll go up that in just a moment. And back here is a powder room. So let's go ahead and just peek our heads in here. There's not much historical. However, it does have the matching millwork and it has a vanity, a toilet, a shower, and it's just really well done. Coming out of the bathroom, we now pass by the newel post for the maid stair. And let's take a closer look at this. This is more so done in the arts and crafts style, which of course is a little bit more simple. And we've seen this style used on the maid staircase before. Now that we've seen the entire second floor, let's go check out the third floor. Arriving at this landing, we see a leaded stained glass window. Now this is a piece of salvage that was brought into the house. It is not actually installed here. It's just leaning up against the old window, but you could get an idea of what this could look like. Now, if we refocus our attention down, we can see that the newel posts on the maid staircase have now changed. They are carved off at the edges and flute upwards with some engravings now along the base. So they've gone from simplistic to a little bit more ornate, but still remaining quite humble. So let's head on up and explore this attic. So arriving at the top of these stairs, we now come to a junction. Directly ahead of me is a large open space that we'll get to in a moment. But first, let's head off to this side. Now let's notice that the millwork up here is all painted blue. And this is possibly historically accurate for this attic. And let's just take a glance around. There are these giant window seats that step up to the windows, which we saw in the dormers of the house whenever we were outside. And we can actually peek out here because the views are just phenomenal from this floor. Let's cut back across the landing and this is going to take us over towards the bathroom. So come on through here. Off to this side is the full bathroom. It has a standing shower, a toilet, a single vanity, and then built-in shelves. Now, if we look over the door to this room, we can see that the transom has been preserved. So that's a really cool feature that's still left in this house. Passing through this door, this takes us into another smaller room and it has these large oversized window sills that look out over the backyard. And we can look out here and see some more amazing views. Passing back through this node here, we come into the landing and we're now going to walk forward from the stairs and we're released into this large attic space. So let's just take a pan around this.
Now that we've seen the entire house, let's go on downstairs and talk to the listing agent about his experience with this home. Trevor, thank you so much for opening up the doors to this beautiful house. It has been such a pleasure to explore this. You bet. Thank you so much for touring this home. It's a beautiful central West End home that's been updated from top to bottom. It retains a lot of the original qualities, which I know you were highlighting throughout today. And I feel like it's just a special home that a family is going to love. Thank you everybody for joining us on this tour. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.